how can I simplify what feels like a very complicated process? And for me, that started with just teaching people how your body works so that you can answer the question for yourself. All right, everybody, welcome here to the Dr. Axe Show. I am Dr. Axe, and today I'm joined by Shailene Johnson. I, uh, I love Shailene, everything you put out. I follow you on Instagram. One of the things I love most about you is you're, you're just very inspiring to me. I love your quotes. I love your inspirational messages. And I know that you've been recognized. One of the things I, I saw recently, uh, you were recognized as one of the top 50 female entrepreneurs to watch. I know you've got a, a New York Times uh, bestselling book of, of the book. I think it was called Push. And uh, you got a great podcast. You got a couple podcasts you do. And yep. uh, I'm excited to talk about all kinds of stuff today from diet to motivation and everything else. So, hey, uh, welcome to the show. Cool. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I've been a, a longtime fan and it's been fun to be able to connect with you in this way. Totally. And I want to encourage you, if you guys aren't following uh, uh, Shailene here on Instagram, make sure you follow her. It's just at Shailene Johnson, right? Yep. Yep. At Shailene Johnson on uh, IG, at Shailene on Facebook. And I remember this from last time and I, I want to apologize. It's Shailene, not Shailene. So Shailene Johnson. I'll answer to anything. Right. But yeah, my, my mom <laughs> pronounces it Shailene. So I, I go with her. That's good. That's great. Well, she should know. Yeah. All right. So let's dive in. Let's talk about, um, you know, one of the things I know uh, that you work with a lot of people on is you have a whole nutrition program now, a nutrition coaching program. And I know that this is really so key in the fitness industry. I know when I was, because I actually started off in undergrad, I, I made money as a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there's a lot of trainers out there, especially who are looking for a nutritional program they can do with their clients. Uh, yeah. But all that being said, tell me a little bit about your concept of what you call diet phasing and in, in, in your nutrition program. Yeah. Well, my nutrition program is something that developed for me out of a, a need or a necessity, kind of like as all things. Um, I ended up having uh, a career in, in fitness quite by accident, not because I was an expert in fitness per se, but because I'm, I'm really good at like figuring out a problem and then marketing it once I find a solution to other people. And for me, I figured out my solution to fitness. And once I started marketing that, um, you know, I became kind of without warning a, a fitness expert who really knew very little about nutrition. Everything I knew about nutrition was from watching people who were more successful, more famous than me, um, who had a better body and going like, well, that's what they're saying. So that's what I should be saying. And kind of regurgitating that. Like I didn't want to buck the system, which is interesting because when it came to fitness, I, did, oh, I always did my research. Like I didn't care what the trends were. It's like I cared about what the university, you know, double blind studies were saying about what works and what doesn't. But when it came to fitness, it's you know, I, I, in fact, I start my book off with an apology because I didn't apply that same mentality to it. I just said, okay, if this is, if this is what the herd is saying, then I'm going to say it too. And um, in that process, I en ended up, you know, with a, a number one infomercial, just tens of millions of people doing my workout programs. And at the height of all of it, I discovered I was suffering from a, a pretty major health scare. And when I was like, guy, I mean, if, if, I, if I'm, quote unquote, a health and fitness leader, and I don't know what is true health, and, and, and I've, been give, I've been following advice and giving advice that is uh, perhaps not grounded in, in science and more so in trend, I, I need to figure this out. And in my process of figuring it out, I realized it's not quite as simple as we wish it was. You know, and so I wanted to create a program where it's like, I'm not going to lie to you, our individual individuality when it comes to nutrition and really health is is not as simple as we want it to be. The, these ten simple things that everyone can do, but I want to make the process easier for people so they don't feel overwhelmed by it. But also to say it's not as simple as we've been making it sound. Yeah, no, absolutely. As you're saying, I mean, and again, it's kind of interesting because I think what a lot of people like to do because it's easier is, hey, let's put everybody in a single box. Everybody needs to do the exact same thing, eat the exact same thing. When if you look at the ancient forms of medicine, everything from Chinese medicine to Ayurveda, they say the exact opposite is, you know, people need to listen to their bodies. There are specific things that work for different people. And so anyways, I love, I love the approach of, and I think that's the future, the future of healthcare, the future of medicine, the future of fitness. It's very much this, uh, you know, personalized um, approach. 
Yeah, it, it is. And it's, it's true that you, you can take the most intelligent individual, someone who's really capable of figuring things out for themselves. And when it comes to nutrition, we have been so conditioned by our failures, which have been uh, planned failures, really, I think, by the, the diet industry. Um, we've been so conditioned that, okay, well, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to fail. So therefore, I can't trust myself. So therefore, I need someone else to tell me what to do. And that was the biggest challenge when it came to kind of marketing of this program is that people were like, okay, well, wh where are the rules? I, I just need, I just need yeah. the rules. Where, yeah. can you, am I allowed to have this? Am I allowed to have that? You know, and um, that's one of the premises of the book is that the only rules that apply are the ones that work for you and the ones that you create. And we'll give you the framework to create those. Uh, but those rules also should always be temporary because your body's constantly in flux. You know, there's so much that's constantly changing that you, if you're just so tied to a, a diet identity, as I like to call it, um, it, you just, then you wrap your ego into it and you set yourself up for failure because you're unwilling to look at alternatives in the face of something that isn't working for you. You know, it's the people who are like, maybe they're keto or paleo or vegan, and they start to have health issues or something doesn't start, you know, like health-wise, they're, they're not in an optimal place, but they're like, it is not my diet. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and they're unwilling to like, just try other things to see if they could maybe just improve their health by introducing some new things. Yeah. I think it's great. I love it. Uh, one, one of the other things too, I know that you talk a lot about, uh, and, and when, when you interviewed me, I remember we touched on this just a little bit, but this is also sort of the entire culture of the fitness industry. You know, I know that, and, and, I, and I actually got a pretty good insight into this. When I was in both in high school and then undergrad, I had some really good friends of mine who were mentors and she did figure and fitness competitions. And so I would do their training programs. I would go to Columbus, Ohio every Saturday and we would do this boot camp with this, you know, trainer. And then I would, you know, uh, you know, support them at the shows and go there. But I just remember going to that, like things like the Arnold Classic and these different yeah. shows and just saying, wow, something is off and yeah. very unhealthy yeah. about this entire culture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's not a popular discussion, I have to yeah. say. Yeah. Because there's a, a lot of folks who, uh, you know, I've, I've had a little bit of backlash assuming that for some reason, it's not a judgment, it's an observation. I think it's an important observation to have. And, and that is to say that we have to look at what we're aspiring to be and the, the things like, for example, especially with social media, where we're looking at someone's image, we're looking at a series of photos that were taken, you know, the week of uh, the final week before the competition, yeah. right? Where I think if you talk to any competitor, with rare exception, there are always exceptions, but most of them will tell you that what I was doing was I couldn't have maintained it. It was really unhealthy, incredibly unhealthy for me mentally. It was hard on my relationships. It was hard on my, from a work standpoint, from a social standpoint. It was really hard on my body. My body bounced back in such a horrible way that you'll find that most people, that that image, right, is what we're aspiring to. That's the image that's going to get the most likes, the most shares, the most comments. It's that before and after, that person who's like shredded and ripped and, and super lean and we're like, ah, oh, what were you doing? I need to do that. But yet we don't know what's truly going on with their health. We don't know what they're doing to their gut health, to their brain health, to their mental health, to um, their metabolism. You know, and so I, I really think it's important that I come clean and explain, you know, I, and I can only yeah. share my own perspective because I think there are ex people out there who maybe this hasn't been their experience, but I can only speak to mine. And I, I feel a, a personal and ethical obligation to be very honest about it today. Yeah, I love it. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's well, do it. Well, you know, the fact of the matter is like every day, even today, I, yesterday, I got uh, a message from someone who had taken a screenshot of one of the videos they were doing of mine um, not too many years ago. And they're like, I love this workout. You look amazing. And I just replied back and said, thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. But just to be completely transparent, what I was doing to look like that wasn't healthy. And I just, I have to be honest about that because, yeah. you know, one of the, one of the video series that I, I did, um, 
the producer, and this is not a statement about the producer. This is the industry in general. Yeah. Right. Now, one of the producers um, contacted my husband just before we started creating the content and said, hey, you know, if you could have a conversation with your wife about um, her physique, we just feel like it would be just be so much more marketable if she could get as lean as possible, leaner than what she is right now, you know, just really tighten up. And um, when my husband told me about that conversation, you know, he was uncomfortable to tell me about it. And he told me about it like angry that he got this call. Um, and it was really embarrassing. And it was also, it felt like all of my um, imposter syndrome was being exposed. Like, see, you didn't study kinesiology and diet and nutrition, so you don't belong here. And now everybody knows mm. because you're not lean enough. Had you been lean enough, no one would have asked you to do anything different, right? That was what my mind said. And I just went into starvation mode. I had never dieted before, but I, I was exercising, like I had major orthorexia. I was exercising like three hours a day at that point, eating as like no fat, super low calorie. That was just my life. And every year that I exercised more and ate less, I had to exercise more and eat less. Mm. And that's when I got this message. And so I started crying because I'm like, I can't, get, I can't get leaner, I can't get smaller unless I exercise more and I'm already at three hours a day. So I bumped up to four hours a day and uh, just was like, you know, you can't sleep when you're doing that, especially if you have kids. I mean, and, oh, yeah, and your yeah. adrenals. Wow. Oh my gosh. And just, there's no time. Like I had yeah. to wake up so early to get those extra hours in and I just started to sustain myself on like a zero fat, zero, like super low, crazy calorie uh, diet until we started filming. And I, I think I got down to like a, a little over 11 and percent body fat, which was just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I lost my period. I lost my ability to control my emotions. I lost um, my mental state. I lost all joy, but I showed up on set. And all the staff and crew were like, wow, you've never looked better. Good job. You look great. You know, and it's just like, and, and also in social media, when I started posting images from that series, um, and people always try to figure out what it is. It is not Pio. I'm going to tell you that. It was just one short video series where I, I don't look like myself. Mm. And, um, but the, the praise and the, the admiration and the, everyone saying like, hashtag goals, I want your body, tell me what you're doing. And so I think a lot of people in social media do that. They say those same things to someone else and you just don't know what they've done to get there. I could not, I sh there's no way in that state mentally I was prepared to, to tell people what I was doing because I was embarrassed about it. I thought I must be broken. I would never tell someone what I'm actually doing because it's ridiculous and I have to do this because my metabolism doesn't work like everyone else's. Mm, wow. I mean, I, I appreciate your transparency with this because I think there are so many people. And I, and I know, again, just throwing this out there, like I know uh, I'm married to a, a beautiful woman who, you know, we, we follow a lot of people in fitness and in nutrition on Instagram and people have, you know, and, and people different, have different physiques naturally. Some people their abdominals show a lot more yes. than others, a right, lot right, more. Right, right, and right. it's it, it's such a struggle. But my message, and Chelsea and I back and forth, our message is: um, I love you. You're beautiful. I don't care if you know it's a fifty pound swing either way. But anyways, all that being said, the big thing for us is: I just want you healthy. I want you feeling yes. good. Uh, you know, I want your hormones balanced. I just want you feeling and looking good. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And and that's where I had to like take a, a break and say. Okay. I, I went to have my brain scanned. I was having a lot of uh, mental side effects and physical side effects too. Like every, I, I couldn't, I was, I call myself tired and wired. I couldn't sleep, but I couldn't stay awake. I, I couldn't focus. I couldn't think. Um, my body always felt broken. Like everything always hurt. I was constantly injuring myself, constantly breaking bones. I was, my hair was thinning. Uh, I didn't have my period, like all these things. But they all happen kind of gradually. I know that sounds like crazy, but it, it all happened gradually. And when I finally did go see a doctor, I was like, yeah, this is not normal, I guess, right? And I, I went and had my brain scanned and um, just sitting in the doctor's office after them looking at my scans, looking at my nutrition panel, and then looking at my hormone panel, I, I just was in shock to hear that I had a failing health score. 
You know, in my mind, I wanted to do that. Like, do you know who I am? You know what I mean? But I was like, how can I like, how is it possible that I'm devoting my entire life to health and fitness and I'm unhealthy? Well, like, well what's so interesting, I'll, I'll say this too, especially for, I mean, it's for men and women, but if a woman gets below really kind of 13 to 14% body fat, you, your brain is made up of fat and cholesterol. I mean, how that affects your whole neurological system is, it's such a huge deal and your hormones. Oh, wow. yeah, everything. And just destroying my gut health in the, in the process. Yeah. So, you know, realizing that that was my situation, I, I felt I had an obligation to first figure it out for myself, uh, document the process. I had this incredible opportunity because of my podcast, because of the notoriety from my, my platform. I had the opportunity to interview like the best of the best, like, and just like do a 180 and just go, I am here to learn. I am here to find out. I don't, I want to speak to the people who aren't selling me something per se. They're, you know, the, the folks who are in the universities who are sharing their latest results. And the more that I learned, the more I learned to practice the phrase, what we know today, meaning it, it's, we're going to learn more and more. And the most important thing right away I realized is there isn't one answer. Mm -hmm. And you need to figure out ultimately yeah. that, you know, let's face it, most people want to look great. That's the bottom line. They just want to look good. You know, if you ask people, I want to feel good, they're like, yeah, but I just want to look good. You know? Yeah. So how do I help people do that in such a way that is a little bit easy? How, how can I simplify what feels like a very complicated process? And for me, that started with just teaching people how your body works so that you can answer the question for yourself. Can I have this? Should I have this? Mm. Because I, I shouldn't be answering that for a stranger and, and, and nor should you or anyone sure. else. Like that's yep. something people need to answer for themselves. But you can't answer that for yourself if you don't have a pretty sound understanding of how to evaluate how things are working for you and how to evaluate how your metabolism works and your gut. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that was another thing I was shocked by. Is I, you know, over the years as I've taken care of people in the fitness industry, uh, and even professional athletes, a number of people with gut issues. I remember I had a, uh, actually a relative who was an amazing triathlete, but he, he got severe leaky gut and started having all these bloating and digestive issues because it, you produce cortisol. Cortisol then starts you know, at causing gut inflammation. And so anyways, it's just sort of crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's very common. Crossfitters, triathletes, people that overtrain absolutely causes gut issues. I, I know. I think we've, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to, I was just going to ask you about, so, you know, I know you have a program. Are, there, are these some of the things you address in your program? Like how do you, you know, in your nutrition program, educate people, walk people through, like talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, for me, you know, I'm not a great student. I didn't find science very interesting, to be frank. So it's learning how to describe things to people in a way that's like, oh, oh, okay, I get it. Like, for example, leaky gut. You know, that, that's a, a pretty involved process. But if I can help people to understand leaky gut by saying like, okay, think about your best pair of yoga pants, like how <laughs> thick they are and they just suck everything in and they move everything up and they're, they're like so opaque, you can bend over and you don't have to worry about everybody seeing your parts, mm -hmm. right? Like that thick pair. Now, like that, that could hold something in it. But now if you imagine... Um, a pair of fishnet pantyhose, right? <laughs> like your gut should look more like your best pair of, of thick, opaque yoga tights. And it can allow some things to pass through, which should, and help those things that are supposed to be maintained stay with the integrity of your gut lining. But if you have leaky gut, which happens to many of us over time slowly. It's a, a slow accumulation of inflammation, inflammation from the foods that we eat that we don't even realize they're problematic for us, our lifestyle, our environment. And those things, they slowly thin the lining to the point at which those really thick opaque yoga tights now look more like uh, fishnet pantyhose. And things are like going through that should not be going through. Like that's a pretty easy way for people to go like, okay, I get it. You know, and so for me, I wanted to write a book that was like really conversational, but yet you understood the most important concepts and how it relates to you and how to evaluate all those things. So an, another really important part of the book is recognizing that once you know how something impacts you, you can still have it, but at least now you know the consequences you're going to have to pay, right? Yeah. And, and so for me, like 
I used to live on, uh, for example, um, air popcorn, right? And I mean, lived on it. And I, I know that that was not great for my gut at the time. Now, on occasion, I know that still, but on occasion, do I still feel like having it? Sure. But I'm also willing to pay the consequences. And I'm also aware of why I feel the way that I do. The other day, another great example is I also used to live on protein shakes. Anything that came like prepackaged and said high protein, low fat, I was like, oh, I'll buy that. I'll live. Like I lived on that stuff in the shakes and the bars. And, and the other day I had, because of poor planning, no food. And I had to go from appointment to appointment to appointment. I dipped into a little shop and I bought like five different protein bars because I didn't even like know which ones are good anymore. And I took a bite of each one. I was like, oh, every one of them tasted so fake because it had been so long since I've had that yeah. kind of processed food. And, you know, within a half hour, just like my stomach. And I'm like, oh, I remember this feeling. I used to yeah. live with this feeling all the time. Wow. Can I, can I say, your, first off, your, your leaky gut analogy is probably the fav my favorite I've ever heard. <laughs> I've used about five different analogies from a fishnet to a kitchen strainer to a bucket. And that is, that is awesome. <laughs> oh, thanks. I love it. So Girls good. get it. So, uh, and, and, and so your book, it's the one, three, one method. Yes. And I, I want to encourage people to check out the book, uh, bookstores nationwide, amazon.com, um, one, three, one method. And so you're getting, you're, you're talking about fitness a little bit, but you're talking a lot about nutrition in this book. You're really going yeah. through it and, and it's a different book, right? I mean, from what I'm hearing, this is a different concept and plan than your typical. And again, I love anti-inflammatory diets. I love I think, you know, paleo and some others can be great, but this is, this is more of a, is it okay if I call it like a mindset diet? It's a different way of thinking about the way you eat. Oh yeah. You'd make me very happy if you called that it a mindset diet. Cause that it starts with that. Like if, if you can't, one of the very first things I talk about is mindset. And if you can't give yourself permission, if you can't accept the fact that you are freaking smart enough to figure this out for you and to say enough with people telling you what you can and cannot eat and enough with people shaming you or, you know, making you feel like you're wrong because you're, you know, eating something that's quote unquote on someone's inflammatory list. If you can't handle that, like we don't need to go any further. So it starts with your mindset. Secondly, it's understanding like what true health means and how to evaluate that for yourself. And it's so much more than something that can be captured in an Instagram photo. And then it's about the process of teaching people true personalization. Example is inflammatory foods. You know, when there's a list of foods that are likely to be inflammatory in the book, but that's not to say it's going to be inflammatory for you. Mm. And that's also not to say that something that is considered anti-inflammatory might actually be problematic for some people. So I teach you how to evaluate that by offering, you know, a series of questionnaires that make it really so obvious to you to like, well, yes, of course. I, every time I have this, I don't feel well. There must be something going on with me. And also resources of places where you can do direct-to-consumer testing. So you can, you know, eat and test these things, or you can, you can actually, you know, send in samples and, and know with some certainty what things might be problematic to you. And it's about teaching people like the concept of like, kind of like freeing yourself from food rules and freeing yourself from, because there's nothing worse than feeling like, I hope I don't mess this up. I hope I'm not doing this wrong. Like that does not feel good for most people. And so freeing people up from that mindset by understanding the importance and the significance of diet phasing. And, and that's something you and I have talked about because I think we're like, you know, kind of on the same page there, yep. which is so reassuring, you know, because I, I know the, the research and the science is so important to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I do want to say this because it makes me think of this. When, um, you know, I've taken care of, just a lot of people over the years who had some people more serious health issues than others, but you know, it, it definitely becomes a negative when somebody becomes absolutely obsessive about every last food they put in their body. And it really puts them in a state of stress and it starts working against them versus sometimes I'm like, I would rather you eat 80, 20 than a hundred zero, but live in this state of, can I eat it? Can I do this? Can I do this? Because it actually ends up being very counterproductive. Chelsea and I went on a trip to, uh, to Italy and I hadn't had, now we make homemade pizza here. We have like, you know, cauliflower crust and these ancient grains. So we'll eat pizza here, but I ate a pizza in Italy uh, and I, I did a post while I was over there and it's, it's pretty clean still. It's iron corn, whatever, but people were like, 
I mean, I mean, Instagram, people can be so brutal. Like, I thought you never ate grain. And first off, I've never said I don't eat grains. I said I try and eat sprouted grains. I don't typically eat very much gluten. And I don't. But I was in Italy with my wife, you know, and I had a thing of gelato and I had a pizza there, you know? You're hashtag a human. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. And uh, at first, that used to really upset me. And then I realized it, that's, that's not my um, doing and it's my opportunity. It's my opportunity to say like, yeah, actually you can live a lifestyle where, especially if you know how it's going to impact you, you can make a decision to have it or not. Yeah. You know? and, and I think that's freeing for people, but because they've been so inundated with the rules of whatever diet they subscribe to, that they feel like they are cheating when they, they have something and they're just, they've made a decision. Inform, I like to call it informed eating uh, instead of intuitive eating, which is great. But I really like, inf like, I need to be informed about my body, informed about the ingredients, and informed about how I'm going to respond to this. And then I'll make an informed decision on whether or not I'm going to have the gelato and pizza. That's Thank good. you very little. Right. That's good. And I think that's, it's people need to be freed from that. And when you see someone else doing it, you're like, wait a second. Why, why do you get to do that? You know, and you can too. You just have to be informed. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a level of awareness as I'm sure. And this is, I mean, again, this is, I, I love the concept of your book. Uh, again, everybody check it out. One, three, one method. Uh, I knew that when we were in Italy, like I could handle it. Uh, I could handle a little bit of pizza. I knew that, Hey, some gluten and cheese I do okay with. Now I chose not to drink a glass of milk or a big tub of ice cream because <laughs> I don't want those repercussions. If right. I eat a big tub of ice, if, if I eat quite a bit of ice cream, my gut is just going to say, no, this is bad. So, but it, it's this awareness. And I think a yeah. lot of people today, um, you know, as you're saying, are so focused on rules rather than awareness. And it's a great point. All right. So I, I want to ask you this too, just personally. Uh, actually, this is a question Chelsea and I asked each other a couple weeks ago. Um, when you eat a cheat, and, and first off, I haven't had fast food in a long time, but if you were to eat fast food or if you do, what is your favorite spot? Like for me, I was like, I used to love Chick-fil-A as a kid. Like we'd, we'd always go. And then Chelsea, her parents grew up in Orange County. So like they always did, they would, uh, uh, and then she moved to Minnesota, but like they loved In-N-Out Burger and I've never yeah. been, but she yeah. thinks it's the greatest thing that's ever, ever yeah. existed, I guess. Yeah. Um, what, what do you love? That's a tough question. Cheap okay. Meals. So here, here's something that's really interesting is if, if, if I believed that there was a list of rules and, and because of that I couldn't have X, Y, Z, then I would probably crave all the things, right? But because I think about what I want based on how it makes me feel, I'm trying to think of like a fast food that tastes really good and it would be worth not feeling great for a while. And I think you know I think I'd have Oh, no, but, but, but here's the thing. It won't make you feel bad. That was, oh, okay. our, that was part of the question. Is, hey, oh, you can eat it easy. It okay. then, she, then she would be doing a extra large French fry from McDonald's with extra salt because they're already so salty. Yeah. And um, a Diet Coke. Wow. Which I used to be a Diet Coke addict, like an addict. Like every fitness video I've ever filmed, I was fueled by Diet Coke. And I had to, I had to get myself off of that and I... It was not easy. Like I literally would have like big, giant, big gulp sized Diet Cokes like all day long. Um, and today it doesn't even sound good to me. Not because it's a rule, but because it, I know what it's done. Yeah. So I don't, it's kind of like you've ever gotten um, the stomach flu or food poisoning. And you're like, if I, ha if I see that food ever again, I'm going to lose it. Like that's how I feel now about certain things I used to live on. So I, I say that because I want people to have hope because – you know, sometimes you're like, I can't imagine living my life without fill in the blank. But if you do it the right way and there's a, a gradual process by which you can do that, where you're just getting a little bit better, yep. it doesn't have to be cold turkey. Like you totally can get to that place where it's not because of a rule or because you know better, but because you feel better and that's what you want to do. Yeah, it's huge. I love it. That's great. Thanks. All right. So you guys travel quite a bit. We find, and by the way, everybody should follow, be following you on Instagram at Shalene Johnson. Yep. Uh, follow on Instagram, and um, again, you guys are always doing something fun. You know, yeah, doing something yeah, fun. You fun. and your husband. 
Yeah, we have fun. It's not a serious place. Don't. It's a, it's a whole lot of comedy and a whole lot of hot mess, but we have so much fun. It's great. So t tell me a little bit about uh, what you guys, I just love to hear, what do you guys do for fun? How do you stay active? How do you do, reduce stress? You know, some of the stuff that's non-diet related, what, what do you guys do? Yeah, um, laugh. Like I, it, my, li my life would be, I just would not do anything unless I couldn't be laughing and, and making fun of myself and making other people laugh. Like it's got to be fun. It's got to be funny. It's got to be exciting. Um, we love when we travel, we will like just from social media, someone will say like, oh my gosh, I see you're in, in North Dakota, go to my gym. And we're like, cool. So we love like checking out other people's gyms and jumping in other people's fitness classes. I love doing that. I love trying new restaurants and, and especially supporting like the local mom and pop who are trying to bring farm to table. Like that is such a joy and meeting people and, and just having the fit. I love having the health experience in whatever area that we're in, you know, like here we're in a, a hotel room and I'm on the 27th floor. And yesterday when I was in the little gym that's here in the hotel, I was like, it's kind of stuffy. And so what I did instead was ran the, the 27 flights of stairs, like wow. but to a cadence, you know, to music. So it was like, I was kind of dancing up the stairs and so fun. Like you can always find something fun and unique to do no matter where you are. Just change it up. I love it. That's so fun. Yeah. We, we were, uh, I'm trying to think what we did. We did like New York sports club or something like that. Uh, we had a great time. Um, so there's a lot of people out there and I, and I hear this. I think a lot of people maybe lack the you know, I don't know, maybe you have trouble with follow through with certain mm -hmm. things. So well, what's your advice? Because again, I, I see a lot of, again, anytime I jump on your channels or I've heard you, uh, you know, speak on a subject, I always come away feeling, you know, in, in, in inspired and motivated. And so I'm curious, how do you stay that way? Because I think there's a lot of people out there. Again, it's this thing where, hey, and, and you and I know the numbers. It's like the average New Year's resolution is kind of over by after three days. And, you know, a lot of people kind of lose their motivation. What, what, what is, how do you keep your motivation and how do you recommend others um, stay motivated to reach their goals? That's a really good question. The answer for me is I am hardcore about protecting my positive mental attitude. So I, if, I, if I know I'm going to read something negative about myself, then I, I won't look at that review. If I, I know there's someone who has something negative to say to me, I, I don't have time to hear that. I see the positive. I see opportunity. I don't see ops. If you, if you see obstacles, that's what you're going to run into. Destination fixation. It's like when you're riding your bike and you say, I don't want to run into that curb. You're going to run into that curb. So it's really focusing on the positive and remembering this. All success requires a series of failures. And so I'm, I'm just trying to whip through those failures as fast as possible to, because each and every time I'm, I'm becoming that much closer to being a success. So my absolute pet peeves, I will rip this vocabulary word right out of your mouth. And that is to say, I've fallen off or I've failed or I blew it. It's like, this is life. You didn't blow it. You're on it. And you're not on a diet or off a diet. You're on a continuum to health. And that's going to look like, like this, yeah. you know, but you're not on or off. You're not in or out. You, you, are, you have to remember that this is part of the journey. And the journey, if you're going to be successful, the journey requires a lot of starting over, a lot of um, not getting it quite right, not being your best, but trying to get there. It's just, it's just trying. Never stop trying. The only way you can fail is if you stop trying. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. It's great advice and remembering. Yeah, it, it's it's a journey. You know, I I think I even look at myself. You know, years ago, I've I've had health problems over the years. From uh, I herniated a disc years ago, and then way before that, I, I had gut issues. It was from adrenal stress and working way too much. I actually, wasn't even diet related. I cut back yeah. on work and went away. Huh. Uh, but but all that being said, it's important to remember. Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, it, sometimes healing takes time. You know, too, and sometimes reaching your goals takes time. I think a lot of times people are like, okay, I'm going to try and you know do this in, in a few weeks. And it's like, hey, it just, you know, it takes time. And so I think that's the, the people I think I find have the most success are the people that it's just part of their life and lifestyle. You know, it becomes, it becomes that. But I think the other thing, and again, the reason I love your book is it's changing your way of thinking. Yes. You know? And um, one of the last things I want to ask you about, because Instagram does this so much, you know, I was talking to Dr. David Perlmutter yesterday, who wrote a book called Grain Brain. And we were talking about, you know, Instagram. One of the biggest things that I think people have this, this thought around is um, it's comparing yourself to others and feeling like kind of the word is like, I don't measure up or I don't yeah. add up. 
I mean, yeah. what, 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 are you, what are your thoughts on that for, for people? Any advice there? It's hard. It really is hard. I mean, I would love to, I, I think it's important to realize that we're all feeling that, right? Like the, mo- the fittest, yeah. youngest, cutest, thinnest, richest, whatever, they're still feeling it too. Um, but to understand that you do have a degree of control. And I I talked about this recently on my podcast where I said, not all comparison is negative, right? Like if, if I wasn't inspired by the number of people that you're able to reach every single day, that might not give me the vision for what's possible with my own brand, right? If I didn't see what someone else was capable of doing, like for example, running a four minute mile, then we, we might not have had another human being break that record. So there's a little bit of comparison or to use as inspiration is positive, but also to know when it triggers feeling negative feelings about yourself. So I unfollow a lot of people who, for me, they might trigger my, um, my natural propensity to overwork. Mm-hmm. So if there's someone I'm following on Instagram and, and they're just like, they're in every city, they're doing another thing and another opportunity, then I always feel like <laughs> I need to be doing more. <laughs> and then I know that and I have to unfollow them. I'm not inspired by them. I'm triggered by them. So I think that's probably the That's advice. great advice. You know, I mean, it's triggered or inspired. I love it. That's great advice. I did that recently. I did a cleanse on Instagram of saying, this isn't good for me to, um, this isn't positive. This isn't good for my life. This is good for my life. And uh, pretty much I've ended up following inspiring people, you know, things, famous quotes, some, you know, sort of uh, uh, pastors and things like that. And I'm like, now when I got on Instagram, it's just, yeah, I feel, you know, I feel good. I feel inspired. Yeah. It's yeah. It's good advice, you know, and, and I, I think everyone should do that from time to time and just... It, even if you're worried about unfollowing people because you don't want to hurt their feelings or have them find out or whatever, hide their content. You can do that without people knowing. And that's what I had to do is like I had to just hide certain people's content. I love them, but I need to love you from afar because it, it's not you, it's me. I feel triggered by yeah. like how awesome your body is or how, how busy your life is. You know, I just, I need to be inspired. That's good. I, I think there's a mute button. You just hit mute. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's it. So, <laughs> Too bad uh, we could do that in real life. I, wow. That, that would be, that would be amazing. Um, I want to encourage everybody check out Shailene's new book. It's the one, three, one method. You can find it in bookstores nationwide, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. Also check out her podcast. She's got a couple of them, the Shailene show and build your tribe. I want to encourage you to check out those podcasts. A pleasure as always. And I, 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 uh, before we went live here, I, I, I thanked you for the, uh, what were the flowers? They're orchids. Orchids. So uh, Shalene sent Chelsea and I some flowers. This was months ago and they're still alive and they look great. So that was one of the nicest gifts. I love it. That was such a thoughtful gift. We appreciate it so much. All right. Hey, uh, Shalene. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you to everybody for watching and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much, Josh. Take care. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. 